Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego. And today we're going to talk more about Sex of the City. That's right, that wonderful show from the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, we're actually done talking about that show. I've already reviewed all 94 episodes. Yes, I have reviewed all 94 episodes. All those episodes are on this channel here. If you want to watch what I thought about it, I've also reviewed uh, Sex and the City, the movie. Yeah, I just finished doing that one too. So that one's done already. I already reviewed the movie. You can watch these episodes here. And I also reviewed that piece of shit show and just like crap. Uh, I got those videos on here too. So we're almost done. We're almost done with all of Sex and the City. That's it. Finished. And then I'm going after your chick flicks after I'm done with this. Oh yeah. I'm going after your chick flicks. Your chick flicks are not safe. I'm going to destroy all those too. Okay. Give you a straight man's point of view. All right. That's what I do here. I give you a straight man's point of view. I'm going to tell you about this movie, about these characters, about these situations from a straight heterosexual man's point of view. Now that's the point of view you never got. When you watch this show or these movies, because these movies and these shows were written by gay guys, lesbians, and feminists, and they don't fucking understand what a straight guy really is like, okay? They think that just because they saw a fucking uh, a poster for Missing in Action, that they understand men, they don't fucking know shit, okay? They don't know a goddamn thing about it, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to set the record straight, literally and figuratively, okay? I'm going to tell you exactly what's, what would really happen, what a guy would really do, and what they would really think in these situations, okay? Uh, so if you're easily triggered, if you're a snowflake, all right, uh, get the fuck out of here right now, okay? I am not going to censor myself, okay? I'm going to tell you the honest got truth because that's what the world needs. The world needs more truth and less bullshit. We got enough bullshit, okay? I love Sex and the City. I would not have watched and reviewed all these episodes if I did not, but it was bullshit, okay? I love the Avengers too. I loved Avengers Infinity War. I love that movie, but it's bullshit. You see what I mean? Okay, uh, the only problem I have with this show about this movie is, is how the guys act on this. This is, this is not realistic, okay? It's not very realistic the way they're, they're no, there's no men on this show. There's no men in this movie. They don't act like men. They act like simps. They act like, like wallflowers. They act like fucking they're just to be walked all over. That's not a fucking man. Okay, I don't know. They got the women right. I mean, these are fantasy versions of women. Uh, but, you know, it's just not, it's not realistic, okay? And uh, so far, since I've been watching Sex and the City 2... Okay, this movie's not very good. I'll tell you right now, it's not very good. A lot of characters are not acting correctly. They're not acting believable. Okay, and I'm not just talking about uh, their personality. I'm talking about the situations that they're in, the way that people around them are reacting to these situations. It's not very realistic uh, at all. At all, you know? And so I, I'm, it's kind of letting me down here. And this is also the last appearance of uh, Kim Cattrall. Samantha is in this movie, all right? We're not going to see her again. Uh, so that's the end of that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to continue my review. This is part three of the Sex and City part two uh, movie. Okay, this is part three of my review. Okay, so where we left off last time. Okay, where we left off last time is the marriage, uh, the wedding of, of Anthony and Stanford. Yes, Liza Minnelli was there. She's singing fucking all single ladies. All single ladies. If you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you, Yeah, oh, that guy, you know you know the fucking song. I ain't going to do it here. Liza Minnelli did it. Okay, um, so that's going on. So everyone's at the wedding. Everyone's there. It's, just, it's, just, it's in Connecticut. It's this big fucking palatial fucking home, a colonial New England home. I guess it's converted into a slash a hotel. Uh, they must have spent over a million dollars. I'm guessing probably a couple million dollars on this wedding. I mean, they hired fucking Liza Minnelli. Okay. Miss fucking Oscar, Tony, Academy Award, you know, uh, Emmy. You know, she won all four. Okay. They hired Judy Garland's fucking Dorothy's daughter from The Wizard of Oz. Okay. They hired her. Okay, to, to fucking sing at this fucking... And to, and to uh, do the ceremony. Okay? <laughs> at the gay wedding. So, yes, yes. It's, uh, yeah, I'm sure it costs a shitload of money. Uh, I don't know how the fuck Stanford got that. He said he'd been the same for since he was 19, but... I don't think Stanford was rich. I didn't know he was Jewish until I saw this, but I didn't know he was rich. Uh, there was an episode about him um, with Carrie, about he would inherit the money, but... Uh, the reason they Carrie didn't marry him... Uh, was because <laughs> was because there was no money to inherit <laughs> because he was because he was gay. I think his grandma knew he was gay, so I was like, hey, you know, this is there's nothing there. But anyway, uh, but yeah, he paid for the wedding. Okay, so that's what happened. Anthony is very excited about it. He's because there were swans at the wedding. He's like, yes, yes, uh, uh, Stanford gets swans, and I get to cheat. <laughs> okay, whatever. All right, so that's that's where we are. Okay, and of course, uh, Samantha really got into the fucking. Uh, uh, the Liza Minnelli singing. Uh, she was dancing with all the gay guys and shit too. 
you know, okay. And but she also noticed Anthony's brother, Nikki, was there. I guess he's the best man, okay, on, on the on the other groom side. And then of course, um, Carrie was the best man on Stanford side because she was in a fucking tuxedo dress just like her husband, but with an ugly fucking hat. Okay, and um, yeah, so Samantha wants to fuck this guy, fucking uh, Anthony's brother, Nikki. Okay, uh, so that, that's where we left off. Okay, so basically Stanford's parents go up there, they make a big announcement, okay, a big speech, and they invite all the couples to, to get on the dance floor and dance. Okay, so that's what they do. Okay, and then uh, Samantha is talking to a bunch of gay guys at the bar, and they're asking her, hey, we want to know who got your, where'd you get your work done? You know, she's like, ah, I've had nothing done. It's all natural. It's just me. Okay. I'm 100% natural. And they're like, no, no, seriously. Seriously, Samantha. I mean, I, 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 want, I want names. <laughs> and then, of course, Nikki walks in. He's like, he's not even a real guy. This guy, I don't know what the fuck this guy is. This guy's just a male model. He's just eye candy. That's all he fucking is. He's a fucking male model. Fucker can't act with this shit. He reminds me of Smith Jared. He's like an Italian Smith Jared. All right. So he just walks in there in the room. Of course, Samantha's like eyeballing him. The gay guys look over. They're like, okay, we get where this is going. Some heterosexuality just got here, so we better leave. You know, so they walk away. Okay. And of course, out of all the women at this wedding, this is a big wedding. Millions of dollars were spent on this place. See, this ain't cheap. This ain't fucking cheap. Okay. Uh, out of all the women in there, uh, the one that he goes towards is the 52-year-old. Okay, come on. This is a straight man's point of view, okay? I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, Kim Cattrall, if you're watching. I know you're not watching this, but if you were, I'm not. And all women that are that, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, okay? But there is a limited range. Now, some women can pull it off, but let's face it. What is what what women, what do you find sexy about, about uh, Kim Cattrall's portrayal of Samantha, okay? It's her attitude. It's her attitude and her style. The way she carries herself, the clothes that she wears, the way she speaks to people, her personality, okay, her sassiness. Okay, that's what you love about her. That's what makes her a standout character to you. That's what you find sexy about Samantha Jones. But what you find sexy about her is not the same thing as I find sexy about her. Okay? Because I'm a fucking man. And we look at other things. We place more importance on the things. The things that you like are not the same things that we like. You know what? I'm, I'm, you know, all that shit, fine. That's fine. You, but you know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at her face. I'm looking at her tits. I'm looking at her ass. That's what I'm looking at first. And then we'll get into the personality. Okay? The same thing that the same way Samantha's looking at this guy. She's looking at his face. She's looking at his body. She's looking at him. Okay? That, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? The things that women find attractive are not the same things that men find attractive. The straight men find attractive. Okay? It's a totally different thing. It's like this, this dichotomy that I keep talking about. Okay? How there's like there's there's type there's two types of women in the world. Okay? There's the type of women that women want to be like. And then there's the type of women that men want to be with. These are not the same thing. And this show confuses those things. Okay? You're getting based. This show's giving you a bunch of women that women relate to, that women can, can, can want to be like. A lot of women do not have the money that these four women have. They can't afford those Manolo Blahniks. They can't afford those Birkin bags. They can't afford those fur coats. They can't afford to live in a fucking penthouse, okay, on the west side of Manhattan. Okay? They can't afford that shit. So they fantasize, oh, what if I could, or I would wear that dress, and I would, you know, it's a fantasy for women. But remember, it's fantasy, it's not real, okay? It's not real. Okay, and I'm sorry, I'm giving you a straight man's point of view. We have our own fantasies too, okay, come on, let's face it, okay? I, I grew up, I, I worshipped Arnold Schwarzenegger as a kid, okay? Terminator, Predator, Running Man, fucking, I love, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger, Okay. He was one of my role models. I actually met him once. He's an asshole, by the way. Uh, but, you know, I, I idolized him, okay? I mean, his bodybuilding career, his political career, his acting career. I mean, this guy was a fucking the bomb, Arnold Schwarzenegger, before, before the scandal, you know, that shit happened. <laughs> you know, before he fucking had a bastard son with a maid. Uh, but, you know, but he was like a role model for me, you know? Um, you know, he's the kind of guy that men wanted to be like, they wanted to be like him, okay? But what will you never ever, when, when Arnold Schwarzenegger was acting in movies, what did you never see him in? You never saw him in a fucking rom-com. You know why? Because women don't fucking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's why. <laughs> there's nothing There's nothing romantic and charming about him, okay? Uh, you'd have to ask his wife about that, but he doesn't portray those qualities on the big screen. He does action movies. 
He does comedies, but they're not rom-coms. I mean, Twins is not a rom-com. Junior is not a rom-com. Okay, uh, he can make fun of himself, like like getting Gunther or something. Okay, but let's face it, he's not a he's not a, a rom com leading man. He's not a fucking a Hugh Grant. Okay, he's not. He can't pull that off. But yet he's an icon for men. That's what I'm talking about. Like Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts is an icon for women. But how many men are really like? Yeah, we'll take her. But you put Julia Roberts here. And then you put uh, fucking uh, Gloria San Giacomo from fucking Pretty Woman. And you put her there. Which one am I? I'm taking Gloria San Giacomo. Because she's fucking sexy as fuck. Okay? Gloria San Giacomo is sexy as fuck. She played the other prostitute in Pretty Woman. Y'all know that, right? Okay? I will take her over Julia Roberts any fucking day of the week. Why? Because Gloria San Giacomo is sexy. She appeals. She, she exhibits those qualities that men are attracted to. Whereas Julia Roberts is pretty. So she exhibits those qualities that females are attracted to. You see? That's the difference, okay? This show, the Sex and the City, confuses these two different things into the same. Okay, they assume that because women love Samantha, gay guys, love Samantha, she's flawless. Means that men feel the same way. They don't. We don't. I'm sorry, we don't. We don't. We're not. We're picky about women, but not, not those things. That's not what men look for. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is just because Samantha thinks that she can fuck this super good looking guy who's obviously in his 20s, he looks like he's in his 20s, and she's 52, doesn't mean that she can. Okay, a, a woman who's younger would have already tried to get with him. Or he, could, he would have brought his girlfriend to his fucking brother's wedding. Or he could be gay himself, who the fuck knows? He can't. He, it looks like he came there by himself. Why? Why would a guy like that come there to a wedding by himself? Yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, as I call him raising the bullshit flag right there. Okay, but anyway, she likes him. He walks up to, he walks uh, in the, um, Nick walks into the room and Samantha eyeballs him, you know, and the gay guys leave. Okay, and uh, the guy, Nick, he goes, he goes like, you look pretty hot out there. Okay, is that really a pickup line? You look pretty hot out there. No, it's not. It's not. Okay, now I know. Uh, like like a, a lot of people can look at the way I'm talking right now, my vernacular right now. It's like, oh, dude, you, you sound like a fucking like a bum or some shit. Well, I'm talking to you the way a normal guy talks. The way I'm talking in this YouTube channel is not the way I talk to a client, or the way I talk to a, a family member, or, or someone who's older than me, or you know, or the way that I even talk to my little boy, you know, my son. No, I'm gonna talk or my girlfriend. I don't talk to my girlfriend the way I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you like a friend, like a, like a person I just met on the street or someone I already know, and we're just talking, okay? Uh, and so I'm not gonna talk this way if I'm hitting on a girl. If I'm hitting on a girl, I'm not going to be like, hey, dude, hey, hey, you look pretty fucking hot out there, huh? You know, that's not the way I hit on a girl, okay? That's the way he hits on a girl. Why? Why? Okay? And why, why would you say Samantha looks hot? Have you looked around? Or is she really the hottest thing in, out, out at this party? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyway. She's not unattractive. She looks good for a 52-year-old. But she's a 52-year-old, Okay? <laughs> She doesn't look as good. She doesn't look as good as she thinks she looks. Okay? Sorry. I'm sorry, but it's true. I'm not saying, I, of course I'd fuck Kim Cattrall. I'd fuck her back then, too, when she's 52. Of course I would. But I would do it if, if there was no, no better options. Okay? Then I would do it. Okay? Yes, just like you, ladies, we are always searching for the bigger, better deal, too. We want the better looking girl. You know? We do. Just like you want the most valuable man. We want the most valuable girl. If we can get better, we're going to try to get better. Okay? So, yeah. In a sense, we're just like you. We just look at different qualities. <clears throat> All right. So, that's going on. Um, <clears throat> he asks her if she wants to dance. Like I said, this whole scene is bullshit. So, it's like, well, I can think of other fun things uh, to do with you. And he's like, huh, what do you do for a living? He's like, oh, uh, I like concrete. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you look like you lay concrete, okay? Uh, you're definitely not a man, okay? Uh, you're, you're a male model who cannot act, okay? That, that's what you are. You're a male model who cannot act. All right. Uh, that's it. All right. So, uh, and like I said, there's no young girls at this wedding? No single young girls at this wedding? Are you, are you shitting me? Really? No single young girls at this wedding that you could be hitting on? Or that could be hitting on you? Remember, Samantha didn't hit on you. You went up to her. Why? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Why hit on her if there's other women there? Now, if she was the only one there, yeah, yeah I would hit on her too. But <laughs> come on. 
<laughs> All right, I know, I know, ladies. And if you're watching, if you're watching this with your husband, your boyfriend, I know that uh, you just, I know he's probably embarrassed now. Aren't you, dude? Aren't you, right? <laughs> but it's true. I'm sorry. It's true. I, I don't bullshit here. This is, why, this is why I gave you the disclaimer at the beginning. Okay, I know. All right. Okay, so uh, anyway, so they end up having sex, all right? Because like I said, in this world, uh, all Samantha's do is pick a guy and that guy will fuck her. Now, if Samantha was younger, if she was like Police Academy, Kim Cattrall, or even Mannequin, Kim Cattrall, I would more believe it. I would more believe it back then, okay? Because younger girls do tend to get their pick. Uh, of the guy, okay, that they want, okay, for sex, not for relationships, no, not for relationships, for sex, they do, they, whoever they want, they can pretty much get, as long as the guy's straight, or, or he has loose morals, you know, you know, like he'll cheat on his girlfriend or whatever, yeah, then she can get laid, but not the 52-year-old Kim Cattrall, that's the difference, okay, that's the difference, all right, so anyway, so they're fine, of course, it's, it's the typical Samantha fucking, ah! Yeah, the typical fucking Samantha orgasm, which is just fucking are annoying as fuck. It really is. It's like watching an animal die. It really is. You know, like I said before on my episode reviews, when she did it every once in a while, it was funny on the show. But now she does it all the time. And it's just like, no, no, no. It's always the same fucking shit. She, we got to see the guy's fucking naked ass plowing her. Okay. And she's packing her loud fucking orgasms. This is the same fucking shit. We don't see any other women have sex like this. Okay, when Miranda has sex, except for the last movie, when Miranda has sex, she has her fucking clothes on. Okay, whenever we, we have not seen Kristen Davis have sex in a long time. But when they do, they shoot it so you don't see their bodies. Okay, um, uh, yeah, or, or they're under the blankets or something, you know. Uh, their bodies are covered some way. Like the time when uh, Brady, baby, little baby Brady saw them having sex, you know. Um, and then when we see, uh, when we see uh, Sarah Jessica Parker or Carrie have sex, we don't see them have sex. We never see Carrie have sex anymore. Okay, and the only times we did, it was under a blanket or something. No nudity. Okay, Carrie has never shown her titties or her ass ever, ever in an episode or in a movie. Okay, uh, so yeah, so it's, it's just like boring. Okay, we don't ever receive. We see Carrie like in, in the in the under the blankets with the guy. Okay, we don't actually see them doing it, but we always see Samantha doing it. Like, it's just come on, man. This is you're fifty fucking two years old. Okay, I think the joke is over. Okay, the joke's over. Joke's over. All right. <clears throat> anyway, so we got to see that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, so they're doing it. And they're making a lot of noise. And they're banging, of course. Whenever they have sex, they're always banging the bed. The, 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 the head, the frame bed is always banging against the wall. They're completely oblivious to it. Like, I can understand Samantha's in orgasm land, so she's not paying attention. But this dude, come on, man. He's just being quiet the whole time. He can't realize that he's fucking knocking against the wall every time he, he thrusts. You know, I mean, I've been in that situation too. You know what I do? I stop. I stop and I move the bed. Or I put something there to quit making the noise. You know why? Because there's other people in the fucking next room. Okay? And I'm, I'm at least aware enough to know that I'm not trying to keep them awake. Bad enough she's screaming out the fucking top of her lungs. Okay? But I don't want to fucking cause a noise like that. Okay? Because that's when you get complaints. Someone calls and says, hey, you're being too loud. Next thing you know, someone's knocking on your door telling you to fucking cut it out. I know. I've been in this situation. Okay? So what you do is you try to show a little bit of respect for the other people that are sleeping in the room next to you. Okay? The only time I ever threw that rule out the window was when I was in the Marines and I was in the barracks. Okay? And that was a different situation because we would take turns uh, seeing who, who could fuck the girl the loudest. Okay? <laughs> But, yeah, I, I ain't supposed to mention that. Okay. You didn't hear that from me, though. Okay. Hey, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about Camp Lejeune. All right. <laughs> HB 405. Okay, no, no, no. We're not talking about that. All right. So, uh, yeah. So, that's going on here, okay? Meanwhile, in another room, uh, you've got the whole family. Uh, uh, Harry's whole family. you got Charlotte, Harry, Lily's there. Uh, Harry's actually trying to read a story to Lily in bed. Okay. And then baby old toddler. Uh, rock. New kid on the block. Pardon me the fight. R-O-C-K, rock, R-O-C-K, rock, 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 rock. Yeah, that one. That one is just crying, just being a fucking pest. Uh, just being a, a nuisance baby. Screaming. Ah, ha, ha, ah. Yeah, just going off. and Like, yeah, they can't get her to shut up, you know. I've been there, okay? I know. I remember I remember the terrible twos, okay? I remember, damn. It wasn't that long ago for me. Okay, I know. I remember the fucking the baby crying in the middle of the night. Yes, okay, so she's going through that, all right? 
No, I thought they had a nanny. Well, how come the nanny isn't taking care of it? Anyway, uh, so yeah, it's being really loud. Really loud, so they can't sleep. So now now we go over to uh, Big and Carrie who are laying in bed. They're just laying in bed. They can't do anything, okay? Uh, they're just annoyed that they can't sleep. Obviously, they can't sleep. It's too fucking loud. Uh, you know, Big's like, oh, my God. He's like, I don't know which one's worse. And Carrie's like, Samantha. Samantha. The baby will eventually stop crying. You know, so they're just sitting there like, you know, <laughs> so he's like, fuck, let's drown out this noise. <clears throat> okay, so they uh, so they turn the TV on and they're watching an old movie. And the old movie they're watching is, um, I believe it's called um, It Happened One Night. Yeah, It Happened One Night. That's an old movie from uh, 1934. That's with Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. And it was directed by Frank Capra, the guy that directed uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Yes, this is all before World War II. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's an old black and white movie. It was, one, it was a rom com, is what it was. Okay, uh, remember, sound movies have had only been around for about six years by this time. Uh, so you know, so it was a sound movie, it was a rom com. I've actually seen it, but it's been a long time. What everyone remembers from it, there's a scene where Claudette Colbert she actually uh, shows off her leg, okay, uh, her leg uh, to get a car to stop and give them a ride. Okay, that was risque back then. You couldn't show leg. Back then, I was like, "Ooh!" That was like basically the equivalent of fucking uh, showing titties uh, on in a movie back in like in the seventies. Okay, like you had to have a special rating, like you weren't supposed to see that. Okay, uh, it wasn't just that; it was like um, uh, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde with Frederick March. That one came out around this time, and in that scene, they showed uh, a woman, a prostitute, uh, uh, yeah, and she was swinging her naked leg back and forth over and over again, and Doctor Jekyll just transfixed by it you know i mean that was risque back then okay fuck the titties just show the leg Woohoo! yeah uh so yeah so it was a big deal back then and uh so they're watching it of course big's excited because he likes old movies you know and carrie's like oh really uh did you go to the premiere when it first came out you know because she's always making fun of his fucking age and like you know what he's only maybe like seven years older than carrie you know so if carrie's 42 she's, he's probably like 50 now or something carrie oh carrie would be Let's see, so she's 21 and 86. I can't fucking do the math. 96 should be 31. Uh, 90 is 34. She was 34 and 98. So that means in 2008 she was 44. Oh, yeah. She was, so she was 34 and 98 when the show started. In 2008 she's 34. 2010 she's 36. Holy shit, she's 36. And so that would make him... Oh, no, not 30, no, 46. Sorry, what's all my math? This fucking stupid. She's 46. So that makes her 46 in 2010, which would make big about 52, 53 here. Yeah, damn. Yeah, and this is 2010. Obviously, they're a lot older now, you know, because uh, in 2021, she's 55. So, yeah, so 2010, that's 11 years. So 55, so she'd be 44. Yeah, I guess she'd be 44. If you go by, they're, 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 their birthdays don't line up with the fucking their characters, okay? But in 2021, she's 55. So that would mean that in 2010, she would be 44. So she's 44 here. And he would be like 50, 51. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they're there and they're watching this, you know. So it's only like, what, six years. So I don't want you fucking making fun of him. He's not that much older than you, Carrie. You know, um, so that's going on here. There, um, you know, uh, she says that Claudette Colbert is pretty, and of course, you know, Big's ah, she's got nothing on you, baby, nothing on you, kid. You know, which is just more simp behavior. Now, I don't mind a husband complimenting his wife, you know, because I know that happens all the time. You see it all the fucking time, you know, or a woman says she's pretty, so now the husband or boyfriend is obligated to say, oh, she's not as pretty as you, you know. And I've fallen for that trap myself. I remember the first time I saw Zorro uh, with my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> Catherine Zeta-Jones, you watched the first Zorro movie, the one with Antonio Banderas from 97, uh, The Mask of Zorro. Oh, my God, dude, Catherine Zeta-Jones is just fucking incredible and the girl i was dating with is beautiful too you know but damn it Catherine zeta jones blew me away you know and she said oh my gosh she's pretty and i was like ah oh, she's not as pretty as you are babe you know i did the same thing <laughs> so i know what it's like to do that okay well she's not that pretty anymore um but uh yeah in, in, in the in the mask of zorro oh, oh fuck yeah and, and Catherine zeta jones not even mexican she's not even spanish she's fucking well she's from wales Oh, go figure. She looked fucking as Mexican as me there. Anyway, so that's going on here. And one thing I will say about Claudette Colbert, and it happened one night, she was famous for doing an interview 
where she said that uh, she basically uh, confirmed uh, the casting couch. Uh, she basically told everyone, yes, the casting couch is real. Because back then, Hollywood, you weren't allowed to talk about that. That's the shit that happened behind the scenes. Only people in the industry knew about the casting couch. Your typical moviegoer in America did not know about the politics or the, or the internal shit going on uh, in the movie studio system. Okay, But the people that actually lived it, that went through, they knew about it, but they kept it quiet. Okay, like The Hollywood people that worked in Hollywood, that made the movie, they knew who was gay, who wasn't gay, who was a slut, who wasn't a slut. And they knew what the producers and directors and the fucking, what they really did. Okay, uh, But it was all kept, you weren't allowed to give interviews about it. You would lose your contract. If you said anything bad about the movie you're in or anything bad about the company you work for, you would lose your contract. Okay, you'd be out on the fucking street. There were no benefits back then. There was no HR department back then. Okay, but Claudette Colbert, she actually did an interview where she acknowledged uh, the casting couch as a legitimate thing. And she even said herself, Claudette Colbert said in an interview, she said, yes, every woman I know Okay, and she went to a lot of fucking parties. Okay, she was a movie star for a while. Okay, she went to a lot of fucking parties. She knew a lot of actresses. She said, "Yeah, all the women, all the women, did the casting couch willingly." There's only one actress that never used the casting couch. Okay, and she said, and it, it was uh, it was uh, Betty Davis. <laughs> she didn't say herself. She said Betty Davis. <laughs> Which would have been true because Betty Davis came from Broadway and the studios were competing for her. They were all trying to sign her. So she didn't have to sleep with anybody. There were there was there was multiple studios trying to offer her a contract. So she didn't have to she didn't have to fucking uh get her foot in the door. She was already in the door. She just had to pick which company to sign with, you know. Uh but your typical actress, your typical starlet, no. They they had to get they had to get into a movie in order to get discovered. And the only way to get into a movie is to fuck the the, the owner of the studio. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And Claudette Corbett, she even said, yeah, she loved doing it. She loved fuck. She could tell you who the who the best fucking, who, who's a better lay? Uh, Jack Warner or Louis B. Mayer? <laughs> or Harry Cohn? <laughs> she could tell you. Because yeah, she fucked them all. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's fucked up, but oh well. Okay, but that's what she's more famous for. Okay. Anyway, moving right along. Uh, so now it's breakfast time the next day. And Samantha brings all her fucking vitamins. She has like 52 vitamins. And not medication, vitamins that she has to take, okay? Uh, she's trying to navigate through the menopause maze that she's going through. That's what she calls it. Okay, and Samantha's like, you know, I have tricked my body into thinking it's younger. And I got it from this. And she holds up the book of fucking Suzanne Summers. Yes, Chrissy from fucking Three's Company. Yeah, Suzanne Summers. Remember her thigh master? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looked good in the day, man. Oh, my God. Man. When I was a little kid, I used to watch Three's Company all the fucking time. And John Ritter was fucking hilarious. Oh, my God, dude. That's some of the best body humor I've ever... He got, the guy was a fucking clown. He was like a fucking... Uh, like, 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 like Buster Keaton. Uh, reincarnated. I mean, oh my, and, I, and I'll always say this about John Ritter. Okay? He's, he's the, the fucking... He is the straightest gay man I've ever seen in TV. <laughs> Yes, I know he was straight in real life. Okay, but he acted, he acted gay. <laughs> and he did it the right way. Not not the Ezra Miller way. He did it the right way. <laughs> yeah, Suzanne Summers. Yes, Miss Stein is Chrissy Snow from fucking Three's Company. She wanted to be the next Farrah Fawcett. She had the same agent as Farrah Fawcett. So she tried to blackmail the studio to give her more money. And of course, they said no. So they replaced. She said, "You're not the star. Uh, John Ritter's a star, not you. You're just a fucking pretty face with big titties." Okay, you know we can we can replace you with another girl. With pretty, we can't replace him, <laughs> which is true. It's true. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Suzanne Summers. Anyway, well, all that knowledge she learned from getting fired from Three's Company, she used it to write a book. Uh, several books, actually. Uh, she wrote a book about her dad being an alcoholic or something. Like, who gives a shit? All right. But she tapped into the middle age uh, market because, you know, Oprah was always pitching books on her show uh, for middle aged women, women in their 30s and 40s, you know, white women in their 30s and 40s, you know, to buy books by has been actresses, you know, uh, to put more money in their account and in Oprah's account. And it worked. It worked. Uh, so, yes, uh, Suzanne Summers became kind of a, a women's author about women's issues, basically about post wall fucking hot girls issues. <laughs> OK, well, once they're not getting hit on that much anymore, what do you do with your life? Well, you write a book about how men are all pieces of shit, even though men are the ones that gave you your whole fucking career. Oh, well, go figure. Right. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So she wrote some book. Uh, it's called Breakthrough. Like a breakthrough from what? From what? What did you suffer Okay, you were married twice, or you were a fucking single mom when you were on Three's Company. 
You know, uh, your husband's the one that fucking ruined your career. He was the one who kept telling you, get more money, get more money. You know, um, you cheated on your other husband. So what the fuck? I mean, what, what breakthrough <laughs> does Suzanne Summers have? She made a lot of money off of Thighmaster, okay? Uh, Miranda says, like, really? You're going to take advice from the woman that invented Thighmaster? Okay, no, Miranda. Uh, Suzanne Summers did not invent Thighmaster. Okay, she promoted Thighmaster. They paid her to sell it on those fucking infomercials at 2.30 in the fucking morning on cable TV. That's what she did. Okay, she did not invent Thighmaster, okay? Um, so anyway, the name of the book, uh, you know, uh, it's called Breakthrough by Suzanne Summers. Okay, and let me tell you something. Even though I know Kim Cattrall is holding up the book, and this is not because it's a product placement. I guess fucking Suzanne Summers gave the producer some money to promote her fucking book. Okay, in this movie. Okay, it's not. This is not the last time we're gonna. Someone's gonna hold it up for that. Everyone in the audience can fucking see the name of the book. You know, Suzanne Summers Breakthrough. Okay, uh, which is kind of fucked up. You know, because you know if you remember back then, uh, in, back in two thousand and one, uh, Kim Cattrall also had a self help book. Okay, uh, that she wrote with her husband. His name was Mark Levinson, who was, who, you know, anyway. Uh, I guess he was like a, a record producer or something. I don't know. Okay, she wrote a book with her husband called Satisfaction. Okay, The Art of the Female Orgasm. And come on, come on. Okay, she doesn't know more, any more about the fucking female orgasm than any other fucking girl knows, okay? But not every girl plays Samantha Jones on Sex and the City. Uh, so I guess that gave her the right uh, to fucking, uh, to write a book on how to fucking uh, make women come, all right? Uh, because of her popularity as her character. See, that's the kind—that's of, what I'm talking about. Uh, Samantha, I mean, Kim Cattrall's popularity fucking skyrocketed because of the show. She even won an Emmy, okay, because for her portrayal of Samantha Jones, okay? So yeah, that would cause a lot of jealousy amongst the other girls, particularly Sarah Jessica Parker, you know? Because let's face it, Samantha was the breakout of the show, okay? People loved, loved her attitude. They loved her style. They loved all, everything about her, her politics on sexuality, all that shit, you know? So she became the breakout star, uh, but she's also, she also pitched a fucking book in real life, okay, that book, and I fucking bought it, okay, I bought that fucking book in 2001, okay, and I want my fucking money back, okay, I want my fucking money back, okay, there's nothing in that book that I couldn't have learned for free with my girlfriend just fucking locked up in the bedroom for four hours with my girlfriend, okay, there's nothing in there else I would not have learned for free. Okay, so this is like, no, what the fuck? You know, just fucking trying to cash in money. Cash in money. All right, get the fuck out of here, that bullshit. So anyway, yes, yes, the self-help book market. Yeah, what, what a thing. Anyway, uh, so uh, so that's going on here. And uh, Miranda, um, you know, oh yeah, Miranda says about the fucking, you take advice from Five Master. No, she did not fucking create it. Okay, uh, Samantha, um, she, Samantha says, like, by the time, if I keep reading her book and taking these vitamins, by the time... Uh, by the time you you all are 50, I'm going to be 35. Yeah, right. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Okay. Okay, then Charlotte finally arrives uh, for breakfast with the girls. She's got the kids with her, though. She's got Lily and Rose. Okay, and Charlotte's like, what? You know, and Samantha's like, what, what, what are those things doing here? You know, because, you know, Samantha hates fucking kids. And Charlotte's like, don't worry. The nanny will be here any minute to pick them up. Okay. And her little, little baby Rose is being a bitch, of course. You know, the terrible twos. You know, uh, and then uh, the nanny finally does show up and her name is Erin. And I am going to stop right here and I'll be back very shortly uh, to finish my review for Sex and the City Part 2, the movie. Thank you for watching this long and I will see you soon on the next one. Bye.